It's time for Community Corner, where we're going to highlight stories that teach, inspire, and help us to learn a little bit more about our neighbors here in Metro Atlanta. I'm Ron Jones. First of all, police agencies across the Metro are looking for new ways to keep your kids safe off the streets and out of a life of crime. So that's why one department in Metro Atlanta held a free camp for kids. 11 Alive's Molly Oak takes us to the field where a skills camp is teaching more than just how to score a touchdown. There's a lot to learn. How to do their agility drills. And a lot to teach. How to handle the football, how to throw it, how to catch it. At a football skills camp. We provide basic skill level all the way up to some medium level uh, skills for the kids to get them interested in playing football, but also uh, getting them to come out and, and um, have a good time outside, you know, and get out of the house and uh, blow off some steam. It's part of the Police Athletic League in Cobb County. It's just a great way for the community, the kids and the police officers to uh, meet each other on a non-professional basis. So there's no stress to it. There's no, there's no animosity between them. Bobby Fisher is an assistant football coach at Osborne High School and a retired major with Cobb County Police. He's helping out with the camp along with Cobb Police Captain Andy Height. Police departments are always looking to build trust in the community. And in my opinion, there's no better way to build trust in the community than invest in the youth. We have baseball camps, we have a soccer camp, our track team is nationally recognized. This camp may not cost anything. But it's, it's not really free. You're going to have to bring some sweat. It's a lot of work and uh, and they, they work really hard and then they learn to fall in love with the work. Taking timeouts to educate the kids. We've had guest speakers in the past that came and talked to them about what it's like to leave a gang or come out of a criminal lifestyle. And learning skills kids can use on and off the field. A lot of the kids may not go on to play college football, but they go on to be successful in their careers. If we can get them to where they stay in school, they put some effort for it in uh, getting a career, that's what we're seeing the benefit of. In Cobb County, Molly Oak, 11 Alive News. A strong heartbeat of a 19-year-old killed in a motorcycle accident beats on today because his mom chose organ donation. Her advocacy is taking her across the country to show the impact her son continues to have to this day. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross shares how his life's journey is inspiring hers. The beat of Thomas's heart keeps Leah Osment moving. That was the day that his last day. The steady pulse giving pause to her pain. I'm so proud of him. I never thought I could be prouder of Thomas than in life. Thomas was just 19 when he was killed in a motorcycle accident last year. But Leah couldn't let that crash stop her son's impact. It's just the ultimate gift. It's the ultimate gift. And that's my child that did it. She donated her son's organs, writing letters to the recipients, traveling hundreds of miles for his legacy to live on. I have a recording of Thomas's heartbeat that is now yours. Treat it well, handle it with care. It is special. Jason Summers received her letter and Thomas's heart. You're just so overwhelmed and thankful. The two meeting on what would have been Thomas's 20th birthday. It just gives me a lot of peace and he is my forever hero. Uh, he will always be my, mine and my family's forever hero. It's a good one. It's a good one. I will try to do my best to protect it the best I can. You will. I know you will. Protecting Thomas's heart after his own was broken. It's just overwhelming, really. I mean, I just, my heart just hurts for her because I know three months prior what I was going through. Jason lost his own son, Corey, in a similar accident the same year Thomas died. It just has to heal your heart. It just has to. The beat of Thomas's heart moving them all forward. I truly feel like my purpose is to heal hearts from this, to heal hearts. And, you know, I'm just following it and I know he would be so proud. His gift of life helping them all heal. 
Congratulations. Thank you. you got a good heart. Thank you so much. Okay. Forever connected. That's crazy. Your heart was made my body. A formerly homeless family of nine finally has a place to call home, a home of their own, and it's all thanks to you, our 11 Alive viewers. In June, we told you about 10-year-old Jadori Sledge, who was dealing with kidney failure and waiting for a transplant. Her mom, Yvonne, was struggling to make ends meet to put food on the table, and she had to scale back her work schedule because she drove Jadori to dialysis three days a week. Well, the family of nine was staying in a cramped hotel room in Griffin when we first met them. Well, after our story aired, their GoFundMe skyrocketed from just 10 bucks to nearly $70,000. So here's brand new video Yvonne just sent to us of her surprise kids with their new home. I like this. Yeah. This is us. Yeah. Come on, let's go look around. Go back here. Y'all gotta say thank you to everybody. Absolutely welcome our sincerest congratulations to mom and the kids. After a more than three year hiatus because of the pandemic, the Brookhaven Police Department relaunched its Citizens Academy for Spanish speakers. So this month's long program helps bridge that gap between law enforcement and the Hispanic community. 11 Alive's Paolo Cerro spoke to those participating in the class and those who actually taught it. Everything I learned from here I can use it for myself, my family. This is Marvin Chavajay, originally from Guatemala. When you walk in on any room, the first thing that you need to see is where is the exit door. But has lived in Brookhaven since 2001. That's a reason he decided to be one of the 23 participants for his city's Citizens Police Academy. When something happened, we don't take actions sometimes because we don't know what to do. Brookhaven police say this academy is helping them build trust and break language barriers with the Spanish speaking community. There's no trust whatsoever in the police departments of their uh, con countries of origin. They believe that if they call 911 here on Beaufort Highway, they're going to get a similar response to what they are used to. That's not the case here. Sergeant Carlos Nino and Officer Angela Hawkins say the free program teaches citizens how the police department operates, from traffic enforcement to active shooter trainings and even putting them through simulations on what officers go through. Through the scenarios, you will understand, okay, why when an officer enters, why, why does he or she enter a certain way? Why do they ask certain questions? It's not because they're trying to stereotype me. It's not because they're trying to be mean. Everything is done for a reason. The program first started in 2016 and had to be paused after 2019 because of the pandemic. Sergeant Nino says over 100 families have graduated from the program with more to come with the relaunch of the academy this year. We do not care about their immigration status. It is probably over 90% of, of the residents down here are uh, Spanish speakers. In Brookhaven, Paolo Cerro, 11 Alive News. Right now, a new law is helping kids squeeze opportunities by selling lemonade as a summer side hustle. So this is called the Georgia Lemonade Stand Act. It allows children under the age of 18 to sell lemonade on private property without a permit, as well as non-consumable goods and prepackaged food. Tamima and Jack Ganauer came up with this bill, which passed with bipartisan support this legislative session. So I'm like, wow, I I've accomplished pretty good stuff. It is easy in situations like this to be able to say, you know, it's just kids. What difference does it make? Or to not treat it with, you know, any kind of care or seriousness. But when they were in front of legislators, they took them seriously. They listened to what they had to say. They asked them questions and it made them feel heard. Yeah, building a, a couple of little entrepreneurs there. The nine and 12 year old duo were recently out selling some ice cold lemonade for the first time since Governor Kemp signed that act into law. And the kids are already looking to what dad is calling brand extensions to try to sell some uh, hot chocolate when the winter arrives as well. You know what, he's not even two years old yet, but a Metrolanta boy is already showing some next level skills on the soccer field. His parents, they put out a few videos on Instagram and now millions of people are watching Star Boy get on down. 11 Alive's Aisha Howard got a chance to learn how this future phenom got his start. 
You ready? Go! A power-packed kick. <laughs> the legs behind it, toddler social media sensation Tabena Ochindu, a.k.a. Starboy. <laughs> Boom! Starboy is a week shy of his second birthday. You heard that right. He's not even two years old. Coached by his dad, Obi, he kicks the ball down the field with a level of speed and control that's gotten international attention. Let's go to work. Keep you close. Keep you close. This was his first viral video with more than four million views. Uh, May, I just noticed for some reason people just started liking it, liking it, liking it. And it hit like 20-something thousand views and a week later ESPN reached out to us. In just two months, his Instagram page went from 75 followers to 50,000. The world is seeing what mom Patrice noticed when Starboy was just seven months old, speeding through the house in his walker. When dad saw this video, he knew it was time to put him on the field before he could even walk. Kick, 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 kick. Bring in, I grew up in Nigeria and um, the game football, like soccer is huge there. So I grew up loving it and, and then I said, well, if, if I ever have a chance, I'll expose my son to it. If he grows to like it, he'll go with it. Mom never thought what started in their dining room would be seen by millions of people. Their love of the game has become something much greater. And you know, just to inspire families like us, you know, to just get their toddlers involved and active. And it's a good bonding um, experience with mom and dad, especially with his father. Um, they have a good time. So something that started off as so fun has grown into something huge on social media and for your family. When you look at your little boy, what goes through your mind? A uh, sense of joy, pride, the most informed, arguably top two best strikers in the world right now. Soccer player Victor Osimhen has actually said he wants to have a collaboration with him in Italy. Um, it is, it, it, it's, it's overwhelming. I, it, it, it gives me joy. It makes me proud as a father. High five. Boom! Good job.